ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Star League, and we're here with our 2017 playoffs for League of Legends and to our semifinals now. It's Harvard Collegiate Institute versus Thomas S. Wooten to see who will be moving on to the finals to face Garden Grove High School in that match. And we're going to bring you this action for tonight, and it should be a fun one for these two teams here, Thomas S. Wooten, Harvard Collegiate Institute, some huge names here in the high school Starly that will be coming up to playing for you guys. It's going to be the number one seed in the entire tournament so far showing up here, as well as Thomas S. Wooten, our champions from 2015. They've gone through the rebuild phase uh, after losing the majority of their team, all their seniors, and uh, now being led by Positivity, who was, who is a former high school Star League champion and is looking to lead his team to the finals like he was able to do a few years ago. So pick some bands underway. Already coming through, it's going to be the cast and Jace and Syndra. Harvard Collegiate, Harvard Collegiate want to take those off the board. Meanwhile, Thomas says Wooden's going to be taking away the Caitlyn, the Nunu, and just waiting on this last band here. So a lot of Solo lane focus here coming out of Harvard Collegiate with those three bands from them and the Zack will be that last band. So a bit more of a jungle focus here and looks like this first pick may be uh, the NAR is what's being covered over right now. Crusader couldn't bring you guys the call. It's just going to be me for this matchup and we'll see how long this one goes. As the NAR will be locked in there. So we'll just have a top lane pick there. NAR is champion that we've been seeing a little bit more often. Uh, coming back into favor quite a bit as well. So that will be locked in here. And it'll be Thomas S. Wooten. We'll be seeing what they want to bring next for their match here. And it's always interesting to talk about how this team has changed positivity. Originally the top laner for Thomas says we didn't got switched to the AD carry role in the grand finals and now is playing in the jungle here Although a ribbon gets locked in and If that is an actual pick it'll be very interesting because Positivity is actually kind of known to be a ribbon main here, but that's because he usually plays that up in the top lane So maybe we'll be seeing a bit of a switch up coming in here We're not gonna be too certain until we get through this champion select phase what we do know for sure is that AD carries locked in. It's going to be the Ash. Very standard coming out here as uh, should just be a strong one for Thomas S. Wooten. So Gragas locked in here pretty quickly. And that will definitely be for the jungle here because we already have that Gragas locked in for the top lane. Uh, sorry, I already have that Gnar locked in for the top lane. Gragas is going to be a big champ here. We have another one of those big frontliners. And Thresh would be an excellent pickup here, especially... Uh, up against this. I mean, there's going to be a lot of CC, a lot of pick potential here. Especially against Ash, who's relatively an unmobile AD carry. But to counteract, counteract that, Galio locked in, who we know will be able to provide a huge amount of appeal for his back line. So into the second phase of the champion select, where we see the next four bands for this game, as we are in the LCS order style of picks and bands that Right, is put into the live service finally. And it's going to be that quirky, quirky, huge pick that we've been seeing a lot. And looks like this mid lane champion pool will continue to decrease with the Galio locked in here. You know, can go top or mid lane. We've been seeing it kind of played both. Uh, so they can focus in a bit more on that mid lane as well as the AD carry left open. Kind of some two big champions left up. And that's why we're going to be seeing these bans here. Although it looks like Carbon Collegiate expect a top lane Galio to continue to focus in on these mid lane picks for the bands LeBlanc being taken out of the pool and this one will continue forward so Garden Grove High School awaiting one of these teams in the grand finals and we'll see where they take a Montville Township second there is going to be in that, in that consolation matchup Garden Grove 2-0ing their way through the bracket pretty much but, you know, so have both of these teams here. We've been seeing a lot of two bows throughout these playoffs. And it's just these two teams rising to the top here. But Temple City versus, uh, sorry, Harvard Collegiate versus Thomas S. Wooten. This is going to be such a good match for both of these teams. 
have done so well in these playoffs. Wooten dropping zero games. Harp Collegia dropped only one in their first round. So since then, they've been undefeated since that first matchup in the round of 64. And finally through that phase, there's a Tom Kench there. They're throwing that ban in as uh, they're going to bench the Kench for now. Vladimir locked out of this game as well. Another strong mid lane pick. So lots of focus on this mid lane matchup. And we're going to be saving these picks for last year. What will they be deciding to choose? Kalista locked in for the AD carry. A great AD carry to pair along with that Thresh. And is going to have a field day stacking up those Ren passive stacks on the enemies. As they're going to be very distracted by the amount of CC that the team of Harbor Collegiate is going to be producing here. All that crowd can all the crowd control, all that pick potential that we have to keep stressing here. And Karma is going to be locked in for that mid lane roll. Huge burst. Huge burst mid laner. And it's going to have a lot of support here. So very team fight focused comp here by Harbor Collegiate. They have going to be able to pack a punch in that. And Thomas S. Wooten, their, their pick is still pretty much up in the air. And this Oriana might mean we're going to have a positivity choosing his signature ribbon for the jungle. Not something you see too often, but something that we may we may need to start looking out for here as Riven gets locked. So this means we'll have a Galio in that top lane, and Harvard was right in continuing to ban out some mid lane champions in that LeBlanc because Oriana is going to be the champion here for Sword. So we'll see if that. So we'll see how that goes down. It's going to be that Oriana in the mid lane. And that's what's going to be bringing the team fight potential here. But a lo large amount of damage from this team of Wooten. As well as some great pick potential with the Ash Arrow. With uh, you know, the stuff that Oriana Riven can bring. They have their own terms of CC. And they'll be bringing that through for this first game. It's Harbor Collegiate Institute versus Thomas S. Wooten. First game of this matchup here in the semifinals. You're watching the High School Star League 2017 playoffs. We'll be right back after a quick break.
Alright guys, welcome back to the high school. Starly jumping right on into things here as Harvard Collegiate Institute take on Thomas S. Wooten. It's the high school Star League 2017 semifinal playoffs or playoff semifinals here. It's Crusader King I'm bringing the call for this best of five tonight. So it's gonna be we're in here for the long call, so bear with me as these two teams do get out in a best of five. Grand Summon is just just starting things out early. Nothing too big in terms of starts, just Bit of advance warning, some scouting coming out from Harvard Collegiate. Nothing of the sort from Thomas S. Wooden, but things will be calm for the start of this game as these two teams look to feel each other out here as it's the, the first time these two teams meet this season, I believe, as Harvard Collegiate Institute number one seed coming through against a former high school Star League champion team. Thomas S. Wooden claiming the title of the best high school in the nation or in North America, actually, in 2015. Then lost four of their rosters through graduation, through four of their players through graduation and positivity. The only, only one remaining was a freshman that year. And now he still is on the roster in his third role that we've seen at least. Not too sure what he, if he played anything in between playing uh, top to 80 carry to jungle, but now he's on the jungle roll. We'll see how he adjusts and we'll see how this game goes down. Bottom lane already a bit of a scuffle right here as Valencia struggles to get back into that lane after leashing for the jungle. We'll have to try to walk past that. The rush and Callista is going to be okay with it. Maybe it's just taking a bit of damage. So once again, things starting off calmly here for these two teams, but it should be an action packed best of five. Both of these teams. I've done so well so far in these playoffs. Wooten going completely undefeated. Harvey Collegiate only dropping one game in their first match in the round of 64. So we'll be seeing what these two teams have to bring to the table with this match coming through. Matchups to look out for. I mean, definitely going to be this mid lane. That's why we saw lots of... That's why we saw so many of the... So many of the bands being centered around a lot of these solo lanes, especially that mid lane here sword highest ranked member on his team he's challenger at 460 lp and he's going up against hal who's sitting at diamond four so a bit of a mismatch in terms of current rankings but we'll see how they can bring it through sword has been seen to take over games that's why we saw no syndra bando away from him and such he's very deadly on the, a lot of these champions here leblanc as well but he's gonna be on this oriana so a bit more strategic play gonna be asked of him here as bottom lane continues to trade out harvard collegiate institute just taking down just coming fresh off of the 2-0 win over temple city high school and that was a great match to watch there. And bottom lane, we're seeing the hook coming through. Ignite onto Valencia, who's trying to get away. Switching over now as Real Darkness is looking to come in here with the gank, but ultimately going to be una unable to get anything down. So that will go relatively safely for both of these two teams. Here, although quite a few summoners being blown. Flash and Exhaust lost for Valencia and the heal out from Fuichu as well. So we'll have those tools. And we did see... Uh, First attempt of a gank by jungler, but doesn't come out to too much here.
So, sitting here is 7 minutes. 0-0 zero, zero so far, but still lots of presence from the junglers, especially around this bottom half of the map here. Positivity taking his own blue. Fights may have something to say about it. As both of these teams looking to be a bit more present around the map now. Lots of kill pressure coming out, especially now that these mid laners have hit level 6 here. You gotta be careful of that Oriana Shocker. You saw that damage it did into that mid lane already. And CS leads developing here. Mid lane 20 CS lead for Reshore you. A huge lead up over onto Huichi right now. And that's gonna be something you have to look out for. But it's pretty much happening in all the lanes. We're seeing these disparities. 70 CS, 70 CS for a race by Jace up over Dog Eater here. Mid lane, we're seeing an advantage for Sword. And in the jungle, a little bit more farming work being done by Positivity. So he got his camps a bit more often here. As uh, both of these teams really looking to get some presence all over the map here, especially with all the wards being popped down. And Sword starting to Get that feeling of the karma damage right there. And that middle lane is easy pushed up. And bottom lane continues to get pushed up here. Ryu Shoryu really gaining the advantage right now over Fuichu. In terms of all the farm going his way. Cole being bought here by Fuichu as well. Looking to just try to stay in this farming lane. But has to be, you know, have to be very careful of the pick potential by fights. Especially now that he's at level 6. He wants to jump up there and look to take somebody down. Won't be able to. Which is something that we're going to have to watch out for. And now Real Darkness wants to head over in here. Though there is control ward now. Ward's fighting out Real Darkness. Positivity is going to be showing up here though. Possible counter gank. As once again, attention being shown to this bottom lane. No jungle presence up in that top lane thus far. Or even the mid lane. It's all been centered around the bottom half of the map. These dual lanes is what these teams are really looking to get rolling here. But so far, no one hasn't been able to find any footing to get a good gank down. So things will be calm here this game. Interesting to see a race by Jace going for the tank items here, of course, with Dorn's rings not stacking very nicely anymore. We won't be seeing those getting... Quite a few of those getting bought here, but bottom lane, we're going to see a hook and the flay and the box coming down. Flash away by Fuichu. Reassure you, takes back his support. Puts him out to get stunned out by that Ash arrow. Maybe that was planned, but erased by Jace this year. Everybody's joining this fight, and that's going to be the first blood. It goes over the Harvard. Fought back, though, by fights. Erased by Jace, going to go down as he's surrounded and taken out. And now under the turret, the flash in, double kill, real darkness. That's going to be three for one in favor of Harvey Collegiate Institute exploding into that bottom lane here and now looking to push it down. Big fight coming out there, but just more damage coming out from Harvard. They come in there and clean up house and they get that first turn of the game as well. So advantage is going their way is going to be a scary thing for Thomas S. Wooten High School. To lose out on that early. Two kills over to Real Darkness there as well. And a very well played fight coming in. I think Fight's holding on to that proc of the Callista Ultimate. So he's able to pop out, block that crucial Asho. He's already used most of his abilities to engage. So doesn't mind going down here. And he's the only death for his team. And now that's going to be dangerous for Wooten. And they make the standard play, they lose their bottom lane turret. They're going to want to move their duo up to that top lane in response to uh, Harvard Collegiate Institute moving their duo up to the top lane. Looking to apply more pressure up here. And look, here's the response here. Sword wants to come up here. The Oriana looking to make a splash into this game. Just picked up that Rod of Ages. And now hovering around the area, but actually won't be able to get in for anything here. And now, another hook landing. Arrow in response there onto fight because Positivity is coming in from the side. He wants to jump in. Gets that kill to take down fights. And now wants to respond as Real Darkness heading into the area as well. This may just turn into an objective take for this team here. Shots 
Shockwave throwing down as Positivity is coming in from the side. They're looking to take down How to Flash and get that knock up. The stun coming in as well. How looking to run away. He's got that snare tether down, but he's getting slowed down by Sword. And Sword's getting sped up by himself. Flashing in. The autos. He's so close. And Positivity closes the gap. Takes down that kill. It's 3-3. Three to three, Tied up in the scoreline. That may change. Real Darkness is here. Explosive cast. Be sure you... Eliminates Fuichu there with the red stacks. Now Valencium trying to escape from Real Darkness, but Gragas is coming in hard here with the body slam to finish off that kill. Five to three. So kills being traded. Wooten ties up the score line, but trades right back by Harbor Collegiate. They put themselves back up by two. Taking down that duo in the top lane, and now it's gonna be five to three in favor of Harbor. Goalie come again for them as well, but they're going to lose this first elemental Drake here. It's just a Cloud Drake. Nothing too major, but Positivity is going to be able to take it down for his team. They're still behind in terms of turrets. Have been able to haven't been able to take one down for themselves. And in a great top lane fight, though. That came through for Harbor. So it's a cast coming out by Real Darkness that really displaced the team here. And now they're going to be playing all around the map right here. I'm going to keep that duo up in the top lane as they want to continue to pressure down this top lane turret. And Dog Ear will remain in that bottom lane and duel it out by, with Erased by Jace. So, top lane push continuing for the team of Harvard Collegiate. And they're going to look to just keep on applying pressure here. Valencium getting hit by a very close hook there and Real Darkness wants to come in and finish the job. You sure he gets a kill explosive cast on to Fuichu. There is just no rest for this bottom lane duo as another double kill comes through. It's this time for Ryu Shoryu who takes that down and now they'll have a lot more pressure going in the top lane and this is just absolutely brutal for the dual lane of Wooten being so focused down here and Ryu Shoryu is going to get rolling. He's the highest ranked player on his team. Has that challenger ranking. So I think... Harbor knows their strengths here. Gotta get this Callisto rolling and rolling that she will be 4 and 0 to start things off here already. So this is a dangerous position here already. Only 15 min only less than 15 minutes in here. Positivity moving over the wall. Runs into real darkness. In for a world of damage. Able to get away though. For now, Blade of the Ring King coming out just for some for the formalities here. Top lane turret. It's gonna be falling here with the three man push. Harvard Collegiate will jump ahead now in terms of goal 3,000 to lead over Thomas S. Wooden. And this is the Harvard we see. They just completely take over games when they have their game plan and execute it. As they've taken a lot of. Uh, Objective so far now going for this rip pair, which should come easily to them positivity trying to make a move onto that bottom lane Won't be able to and now rip going down this must mean a mid lane push in the works for Harvard I would assume here the last out of turret that they have to look to take down And this 3,500 gold lead is going to prove to be huge, I think, in this early game. Positivity just doing his work here in the jungle. He's been farming up a lot, but doesn't have that kill participation that Real Darkness has. He's 3 0 and 4. So Real Darkness is at 100% kill participation, and so is Ryu Shoryu here on the Callista 4 0 and 3, picking those up. These two have been. These two are going to be what you have to look out for. This Callista coming in. I mean, not the most picked AD carry as of late, but is going to be doing so much damage in these team fights. Once those spears get stacked with the rend. It's now Wooten, though. They have a bit of time to make up for it. It's still less than 20 minutes in this game, and. Harbor Collegiate Institute have only just started to begin rolling, so Wooten may have some time to fight it back here. Arrow through that middle lane, looking to find a pick here, won't be able to, and that's going to be 
A very useful ultimate loss there for now. And we are seeing Wooten looking to make attempts here on plays. Sword getting hooked over there by the side as this middle lane turret's gonna get focused down. Real Darkness looking to come in. Explosive cast puts Fuichu out of position, but able to get it out of there. And there's the there's the ultimates coming down. Shockwave being thrown out. Positivity wants to join in on this fight. The AOE coming in though. And look at that damage. Positivity leading the charge under the turret there. And that's gonna be three for one in favor of Wooten High School. That heroic entrance coming through. Getting the knockups into the shockwave by, for a sword, and they will continue to roll through. They'll take two turrets from this middle lane, blown wide open by Thomas S. Wooden, and a massive fight for them showing up here. And they will spread out away after that fight coming through. Fuichu somehow able to survive using the flash and the heal, but able to get out of there in the Peel that comes out of Erased by Jace the Galio just can't be understated as big part of keeping his team alive there as well as that AoE damage, that could, uh, AoE CC that could come out positivity as well with a lot of damage with that ribbon he's been stacking up on those kills a bit. But some crucial kills going over to some crucial people as Erased by Jace and Sword get on the board here as Rift Herald does get used by Harbor Collegiate Institute. They'll get to work pushing middle lane. Channel Crusader coming in. They take down that Rift Herald. And they were able to successfully delay that push. So, middle lane outer turret will be able to survive for Wooten High School. Now they'll hover around this dragon. Not to Drake. Spawning here now. We're seeing lots of focus down here, and actually, reassure he's up in that top lane, so isn't going to be able to respond to this dragon take here. And Harvey Collegiate just gonna let this one go. It's a pretty free dragon there for. Thomas S. Wooten. And his Reed Shoyu just split pushing in that top lane. Does boast a uh, about a 30 CS lead there. You gotta be careful those dragons stacking up. When it gets to the late game, those are gonna be very scary. Race by Jace getting pressured out here in the middle lane, but it's a Galio, honestly. What do you expect? Although lots of presence here from Carbon Collegiate Institute. They did lose that last recent fight. Maybe lost a bit of momentum, but are not stopping and putting down these wards in the jungle. There is a uh, ward that's just being spotted out there now. But yeah, they've been able to litter the ground over here with the wards here. And um, I like that deep vision there. So They usually just do a great job of playing all over the map, and that's what they're doing now. Are you sure you picking up his second item, that Rune and Hurricane, which, as we can tell, is going to make Callista very effective in stacking up those spears, and we'll be able to put out huge amounts of damage with it as well. So Thomas has Wooden looking to fan out a bit here, trying to put some more pressure in all the lanes right now as they want to get those side lanes pushing. Fuichu and Erased by Jace clearing out waves on the sides and now they'll rejoin the team for the fight here. Fights will be finding Fuichu on the side, puts up the box to delay him and now wants to bring in Real Darkness, will be able to heroic entrance coming in, explosive cast to bring him back. Fuichu goes down to fights but now the fight begins. Four man Todd coming in out there, the shockwave to bring in one, that's the burst damage onto Hal. Now they're chasing after the AD carry positivity is on top of Ryu Shoryu. Trying to take him down here. Meanwhile, double kill coming out for Sword as he finds his own kill for himself. And that's another one for three. Now on top of Dog Eater. They wanted they're gonna focus him down. Double kill for positivity. And now Thomas says Wooden gonna jump ahead with this lead, taking down four for one for themselves. Huge fight there once again for Thomas S. Wooten. Harbor Collegiate, they thought they had their number pinned on Fuichu. They thought they could take him down, but not fast enough. And the response from Thomas S. Wooten is just explosive. 
They'll take this top lane turret, and that's why you get your side lanes rolling before you look to go for a fight here. And although it wasn't really Thomas and Spoon looking for a fight, but they got what they wanted here. Able to find a 4 for 1, able to take down that turret in the top lane. And that's very well done by them there. They had those, those side lanes pushing positivity. Gonna find real darkness in his own jungle, and hey, it's a jungle riven. Gonna be hard to duel against this. And not to mention, it's the Riven main of positivity. He loves this champion. And that's what he originated as a top laner for Wuta in high school. Now that he's in jungle, he'll take the Riven with him. 4-0-3, his scoreline currently. And Fuichu, I mean, hasn't been having a great game, but it's been made up for here by the amount of work that's been done by the rest of the team. A race by Jace with a huge taunt in that last fight to help out the team there. And... I almost set up a brilliant shockwave, unfortunately. I was only able to catch on to one of the enemy team there, so. Didn't see too much of that, but that's the potential for this team. 23 minutes in. The team fights are looking great, and they're at a little bit over 2,000 gold in the lead right now, so. It's a great fight. It's a great few sets of fights looking out for them. They've won every team fight so far. Harbor was just dominating in the lane phase. But when it comes to 5 on 5, we're seeing Wooden High School come through with it very well. And there's a lot of damage reduction coming in. A race by Jace and Valencium here. They can soak up so much damage for for either Sword or Fuichu. And that's why, I mean, they have they have a huge amount of potential together. Because they just absorb so much damage. And it's so hard to take down those carries. Once again, mid lane siege being pushed through by Harbor Collegiate. Third time to charm is what they're attempting here. Once again, side lanes being pushed out by Thomas S. Wooten, but that would have a slower response to this mid lane turret this time. Real Darkness wants to go and try to take it down. Gets stunned up under in the tower aggro. Shockwave being blown a bit early here. Real Darkness able to shield himself back up and will have some of that regen going for him. So, scary moment there for Real Darkness, but you know, you stunned up the tank under the turret, so not much can be done there. If you can't take him down, then it's, you know, not the worst thing in the world. It was a Gragas anyway. Able to soak up a lot of that damage, so. Another failed attempt in that middle lane by Harbard. And now Thomas S. Wooden have the momentum going their way. They're really controlling this game. They're just constantly shoving up on these side lanes. They had those two elemental drakes. Looks like a ocean drake is up next. So they'll have three out of the four if they're able to pick it up. And all over the map has been positivity. 50 CS in the lead right now. As he's just denying these jungle camps. Taking away some of these raptors this time. Valencia. Gonna get caught out here. And can he escape though? Here it comes the Gragas ultimate. Make, I mean the Galley ultimate. The stun landing on the fight. They're gonna take him back and Mishori throws him out. Look at that CC combo coming in the Nar ultimate. Not done for much though. Shockwave being thrown down. They take down Hal in the midst of that. Fuichu now joining the fight. He's been untouched. Mishori already down as positivity. He went to dive him down and try to take him out. Flash forward. Dog Eater fights. Looking to escape. Looks like they may be able to. A race by Jace though. Wants to catch up there. Gets that taunt down to Dog Eater while he's trying to get away. Still chasing after him. Won't be able to catch up. Two for one in favor of Wooten High School. Valencium oh, can't burst down that Brahma. Especially when that Galio heroic entrance gets thrown down onto him. And now with this pressure. They've taken down the two carries of Hal and Shoyu. Temple City. I mean Thomas S. Wooten can move in onto the inhibitor. It's going to go down. Middle lane inhibitor going down 26 minutes in in this first game. You wouldn't have expected this at 10 minutes when Harvard Collegiate was dominating it. But Thomas S. Wooden has really fought back. So inhibitor down in that middle lane. Lots of pressure going that way for Wooten. And now we'll have to see a response there. Harvard Collegiate Institute looking to have a... Bit of a uh, looking to find someone out of position. They found Valencium, but weren't able to take him down and paid for it. But now the Baron, fast Baron, start up right now by 
Thomas S. Wooten. They know this is going down, but there's a control word blocking out their own wards. Jen and Cristalero, they're going to be backing off here. But inside the fight, there's the taunt coming in. And Erased by Jace just doesn't take damage. He gets put back in there, but a shockwave. It's massive damage coming in. Positivity's in the midst of it. The CC's going both ways. But the Fuichu and Sword have been untouched. And they're doing so much damage from this back line. Chasing got to be sure you Valencium's in here. Can't get the stuns down. Will be able to take him down, though. Hal, the only one left standing, running his way down that top lane. And that's going to be a four for none in favor of Wooten High School. What the, can they do with this push now? Massive team fight once again coming in from them. They continue to win every single team fight. They got low in that one, but it wasn't enough to take down the team. Erased by Jace, just too tanky on that Galio. And with some death timers still ticking down, they'll look to end the game here. They're on the Nexus turrets. First one's going to go down. Here's the second, and this looks like it will be the game. Real Darkness is back up. They're trying to fight them off this, but it's too much, too little, too late. And that's game one over to Wooten High School. Thomas S. Wooten picking up the win for game number one. A massive win for them, especially coming off of the early game deficits there. Very well done by... The team here, it's the former high school Star League champions that came through. So that's going to be it for game one, guys. We're going to be going over to a quick break before we get on into the second game of this best of five. Wooten leading one to nothing here over Harvard Collegiate. We'll be right back with more high school Star League action after this.